that just that doesn't sound appetizing at all. It really doesn't. No. Um, it just and again, you know I like pizza. I like cauliflower. I like guacamole. But it depends on how you combine them. You see, that's that's the, that's the rub. Gotcha. Well, I just want to say before we get started to uh, to everyone uh, again, if you hear strange noises coming from the broadcast. Uh, it's probably because it is uh, wrestling time here in the Liberty Radio studio. So don't be alarmed. Uh, it's actually, that's normal. Uh, but welcome back to your Liberty Radio on a Thursday night. Ladies and gentlemen, you know uh, what time it is. Woo-hoo! That's right. Bend over, America. Today is uh, September 26, 2024, Yona. There are four days remaining in September, which means time is running out for Satan. I'm sorry, I mean Netanyahu to get oh. boots on the ground in Lebanon uh, as per uh, the Liberty Radio prophecy from last week. Well, gosh, I, I don't know what to say to... to... What's his current name? Because, I mean, uh, you know. if you go back uh, on the the history of uh, old BB Netanyahu there, or Nutty Yahoo, or Satan Yahoo, whatever you want to call him. I mean, whatever he wants to call himself, right? I mean, this motherfucker's gone through like four or right. five different names. He like, Bubba, you know, if you know him personally, from what uh, I've heard. And he was actually born in the United States and went to school in the United States. He's I thought he was born Netanyahu in Netanyahu uh, is actually more call, American. No, I thought than, he was from uh, Poland. He's born in the United States. Really? All right. Well, I'm going to fact check myself here. No, I'm going to pa- fact check you while you keep talking. That's that's the format. Remember? Netanyahu. Benjamin Netanyahu. Born I mean, all you have to do is type in Benjamin, and it's the first thing that comes up on Wikipedia. Uh, born to secular Jewish parents, Netanyahu was raised in West Jerusalem and the United States. In the States. United States, holy shit. And the United States. So, oh, now it says he was born in Tel Aviv. Really? Because uh, who is it uh, that uh, the, the shady Australian, Brendan O'Connell, uh, he always said that Netanyahu was from uh, Krakow, Poland. No. So I guess that's one more strike against him. Oh, well. Yeah. I mean, it's just one more on the pile, honestly. So let's see here. 1967 photograph of Netanyahu by the IDF. So let's see. Netanyahu was born in 1949 in Tel Aviv, second of three children. He was initially raised and educated in Jerusalem. Uh, Between 56 and 67, His family lived in Cheltenham Township, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia, while his father taught at Dropsy College. Dropsy? Dropsy College for Hebrew and Cognate Learning, or Dropsy University, was a Jewish institute, Hmm. a Jewish institution of higher learning in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It was America's first degree-granting institution for post-doctoral Jewish studies, funded by the will of Moses Aaron Dropsy. Was. Interesting. After a brief period as the Annenberg Research Institute from 1986 to 1993, Dropsy ceased to be an independent organization and was absorbed into the University of Pennsylvania, becoming the Katz Center for Advanced Judaic Studies. I wasn't aware there was such a curriculum. Me neither. In in like a, a public university system. Dropsy. That's interesting. That's very Hebrew interesting. And cognate learning. 
where Netanyahu's daddy was the teacher. Hmm. Well, how do you like that? How do you like that on your Philly cheese steak? Well, I guess more racism, please. That's how he got his U.S. citizenship, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know if most people out there knew that. Yeah, he, he's a U.S. citizen. Yeah, the the biggest war criminal on the planet right now. You know, eat your heart out, Dick Cheney. He's, the uh, uh, Dropsy he's actually College, an American citizen. The Dropsy College was founded in 1907 after its benefactor Moses Aaron Dropsy, 1821 to 1905, a wealthy man whose father was Jewish and mother was Christian, but who self-identified as Jewish from the age of 14. Dropsy left his entire fortune for the establishment of a Jewish college. Hmm. And now it's part of UPenn. Anyway, boring. I would say boring. so. I would say so. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, Yona. What, what do you think of the whole Lebanon situation? Because obviously I've, I've already had you know, my chance to say what I think about it what I think is going on, what I think is happening, likely well, you to see, happen in the future. There are uh, striking parallels between the combat in uh, the Ukraine, my favorite country that's always preceded by an article, the Ukraine. Not to be confused with other Ukraine. Less than the seven Ukraine. minutes into like, the you know, Like on your uh, Twitter, like, the real drizzle, because you know, there's eventually, eventually, we'll drizzle. get that one, yeah. Um, but Official with drizzle the Ukraine we'll and the state of Zion, they both have these greater projects at hand. Of course, you've got the greater Kazaria project, um, the hell with is that? the uh, Ukrainian, um, uh, oh, what do they call those where they, um, with the swastikas and the um, oh Nazis. Nazis, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the Ukrainian not, not Nazis, Buddhist, but uh, Nazis. you know, you know, laugh laugh your ass off. Anyways, yeah. um, just laugh your ass off. Um, and right sector and a couple others. Um, you know, I mean, you can go back to where they had their own. They being the Ukraine. They uh, there was a Ukrainian uh, Wapen SS division. Um, again, mixing the Khazar and the Khazarian mythology. And so the Greater Khazarian Project, uh, you know, which, I mean, you, uh, it's if you really want to be disgusted uh, by just this, the most fantastic um, racism and alternate fantasy history, um, Listen to some of the speeches of the former head of the Ukrainian Independence uh, Party, um, Stepan Bandera, uh, because, you know, in terms of the map, and I may have mentioned this on a Get Back Harder previous. Uh, yeah, I think we've gone over it before, but, it, you know, refreshing but, um, never hurts. Ukraine, like, gobbled up over half of Poland's territory. And then, since all this combat began, untold millions of Ukrainians, that, that's with the capital M, millions, like a milli, a milli, a milli. You know what I'm saying, young uh, Um, Shout out Lil Wayne. It's millions of Ukrainians that have poured into, well, Krakow, as we mentioned that town earlier, and... Um, you know, there there is a famous person that was born in Krakow. That being, but it's not Netanyahu. Uh, it would be uh, Karol Voitla. Is his uh, birth name, Karol Voitla. But most people would know him as the uh, Holy Father, um, Pope oh, John. Pope Paul John Paul II. II. Yeah, yeah. J.P. Deuce is from Krakow. Um, but anyways, with all these millions of Ukrainians pouring into Poland, um, 
you know, you hear a lot of anti-Ukrainian rhetoric out of Poland now, not just anti-Russian rhetoric, which you still hear that too. Um, it's just that uh, Poland be like, kind of like hating everybody at this point, which I, you know, I can't blame them. I mean, well, Poland has just been punked. And yeah, I mean, they, they've been Europe's punching bag for, what, 150 years, if not more? Yeah, I mean, there's so many poignant examples. I mean, take, for example, when um, the two foreign ministers sat down, um, Molotov and Ribbentrop. And they made the the the, the, the Molotov Ribbentrop Pact, um, where basically uh, the Nazis and the Rus the Russies got together and said, "Well, you can have this part of Poland, we'll take the rest." Okay, deal. Hey, Poland. Yeah, we're about to kick your ass, but he's only going to kick the right side of your ass. I'm going to kick the left side of your ass, but I don't want my ass kicked. World War Two. There you go. And then you had some of the allies who were like, hey, hey, you can't do that. Um, the, uh, England, do something. Hmm. And so England sends over Neville Chamberlain. <laughs> well, these bloody Nazis aren't that bloody bad. Fucking Chamberlain. Anyway. Well, they, they, and they, remember, they sent over Boris Johnson. <laughs> Bojo the Clown. Because I, I guess he's the, the Neville Chamberlain of our time. Yeah. God. That's, that's real fucking scary. Oh, God. <sighs> Couldn't they send over uh, King Chucky the Sausage Fingered? He's a diplomat. Where's he been? He has, he has not been in the public eye lately. He is MIA. I'm, oh, I'm starting he, to wonder. Uh, I, I think uh, Chucky the Sausage Fingered and Old Poopy Pants are uh, down at uh, Little St. James Island. Rest and relaxation time. That wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you don't think Prince Andrew is the only royal that's been there uh, doing a little bit of that tiddlywink type stuff. Some of that general tomfoolery and bollyhoo that the Caribbean sexcapades have become known for. I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, I remember going through the flight logs and like trying to pick out all the names that I recognized. There was a lot to recognize. There was, but I don't remember seeing like anyone from the Dutch royal family or like from the the uh, the family that controls Monaco, um, or or any of the other like quote unquote royals in the world right now. I don't remember seeing any of their names on it. So I'm wondering if maybe there are. Uh, other Epsteins out in the world that control those regions. You know, so there's another oh, there's Epstein over in Europe that basically just kind of coordinates that part of the world. I mean, wasn't P. Diddy the Epstein of the rap world? With that's what Cameron they say. And the blackmail and the I don't know how much I believe that, but that's what they say. I don't know. I'm we, not hurting. We might be about, about to find out. Group. That's the interesting thing. Is we, again, we might, we might get the chance to witness history repeat within a decade. Think about that. Um, you know, when it comes to banning and censoring and everything, I would just like to take this moment to uh, salute. You, uh, Luke Skywalker, and the rest of Two Live Crew, for being pioneers in censorship and banning, at least in terms of being one of the first great musical victims 
of censorship and banning because of course we're going back way back in time when you had uh, Al Gore's wife Tipper Gore with the uh, parents and something what was it the PMS what was that thing for anyways oh, was PMRC. they're the ones that got the fucking uh, what was it PMRC Parents Music yeah, Resource PMRC. Council yeah that's right Parents Music Resource I only, I so only they were the ones that, that came up with the, the uh, label thing. explicit lyrics and yeah, 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 yeah. that on yeah, yeah, yeah. Music and, and, and uh, D. Snyder is an asshole, which which we found out later was actually true. But it began the most cited example for the reason for that was because of the lewd sexual content of two live crew, eh. and so rather than just you know censor a song, it was tame. They, I know it was tame. They banned their entire album, and so they then recorded. I know. I a immediately went out and bought it. Of uh, Springsteen and the E Street Band because that's made how that works. USA, and they did their song "Banned in the USA," and that actually made the top forty. Yep. I think that's the only top forty charting song of Two Live Crew ever banned in the usa and it's a parody of the springsteen track but they're telling the story the songs off that album made it into the top 40 but i could be wrong um uh, they're telling the story of being just completely banned banned from record sales banned from the radio banned from everything and it was such a public example that this whole thing about underground music like we're you know the whole music industry is rigged we're just going to keep it underground and so like when i was really getting into edm in like 88 and 89 and 90 it wasn't called edm it wasn't called techno it wasn't called house well no they didn't it didn't have those it was just called underground yet. because you it was underground music you didn't hear this shit on the radio you only heard this shit at the club. Right. But or now, like, you know, or... David Guetta and Avicii and just um, Afrojack, all these different um, club, uh, you know, EDM artists, I guess you would call it, um, that just blew the fuck up. And now, like, I hear EDM shit on country. I hear EDM shit in rap. I hear EDM everywhere. And it's like the cool thing now, that cool patina. Uh, but, of course, it's when I listen to it, it's all AI. Just like with the uh, auto tune. Well, I mean, you, it, yeah, it's hard it's to late. really try to wrap my head around at this point. How much of the new music being written, songs being composed, melodies, harmonies, chords, instrumentation, lyrics, all that. Mm -hmm. How much of all that is just AI now? How much? Um... And, you know, if, if you go back before AI, you had focus groups and other crap that the major studios were cranking out. And, I mean... It's been that I way going back. I don't think to he like, had as many of those as they wanted us to believe. But like, I think a lot well, of that for was example, just um, Millie Vanilli. You know, yeah, so how... they, they probably had like a, a PR firm tell them, you know what would be a great musical act? This is what you should do. They're great. And so they did. And they've got the look. They right. just can't think. That's right. They anything. had that. That's exactly it. They, they had they the got right that look, look. And it's MTV and VH1. We'll make some right. music videos. That's right. We'll put It'll on a great. show. We'll make it look good. It'll be oh, perfect. Wait. They, that you need them to perform live? Hmm. Say what? <laughs> uh, 
I I'd actually requested Millie Vanilli for the for the call uh for the request show. But you did. Uh, you did, and that I vetoed it. That was immediately it. vetoed. That's right. I have executive power. That is one of them. <laughs> it's kind of like a superpower, but it's actually real. So I can use it whenever I want. No, Yona, we don't have time to play fucking Millie Vanilli. <laughs> no, I just refuse to. Just like I, uh, who was it? Post Void uh, was like, you should play this Backstreet Boys song. And I was like, veto. Oh. Vetoed, no. Not not on my station, damn it. You know, I am actually curious. Since we now know, and we've known for quite some time, that Millie Vanilli were in fact not playing the instruments. Yeah. Nor singing the song, nor did they write them or any of that shit. It begs the question, who are the fucking... Because that song got the that and other songs they actually charted you know remember yeah, blame it on the rain yep, yep. like and all these songs well who the fuck is singing that then that's it's a good not question them. you that's know i mean question. after I always, all this time i, always I would like thought. to see due credit given yeah to who the fuck ever actually sang those crappy fucking songs well you know so 80s yeah but so See, this is this is where my racism comes out, Yona, because I always thought that <coughs> whoever it was that was singing those songs had a voice that was at least one of them had a voice that was very similar to Corey Glover of Living Color. Yep. Like it, it, the the tones are very very similar. Like it it would be very easy to mistake one for the other. In oh, my opinion, wow. in in my professional opinion, all right. Well, imagine if you played, uh, blame it on the rain, and then follow it up with cult of personality. Yeah. Then you're gonna know. Yeah. Then you're gonna know. And Living Color fucking slaps. Oh, yeah. Had that album and played the fuck out of that cassette until it got eaten. Yeah. And just totally well, dropped. The and then I tried to shit. fix it with I need to put Spade. that on the list. That's still one of my favorite songs. Always has been, always will be. And find a fucking pencil and try and wind it back. You know, I honestly, I don't miss cassette tapes, really. Don't miss them. And then it was like, oh, wow, CDs are great. And then, you know, they're like, get scratched and shit. Oh, not my CDs. Mm -mm. I was meticulous with my CDs. The best part about CDs was the CD case. As most of you would probably guess. I'm sure. I'm sure my my OCD has has come across in the uh, on the airwaves. The coolest thing ever was like, you like what, back in the day when we would do coke. We would do coke on CDs. On the, the CDs, CDs, I know. I would always see people doing that. I was like, you dumb fucks. And then like, uh, <clears throat> the. Uh, Guns N' Roses came out with their greatest hits <coughs> after the band had already broke up. And the fucking CD is like got the razor scratches all on it and fucking coke powder yeah. on it. Well, what do you think they were using in like dressing rooms and shit? Because they, oh, yeah. they always had CDs around for promotional purposes. Well, crack one of those fuckers open. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do a little, but a little wasn't do it, so a little got more and more. That's right. He keeps not. What was it? We've been dancing with Mr. Brownstone. Right. He keeps he knocking. He keeps knocking. He, he won't, leave, won't me leave me alone. No, oh, oh, oh. That's won't classic, leave me alone. man. Yeah, man. And a generation wow. of addicts were born. What was that, 87, <laughs> 88, something like that? 
Shout out Crack Rock. That's right. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, to the new new uh, lesbian uh, Axl Rose. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, when when you hit sixty and you're an aging rock star, you become a lesbian. I was not aware of that, but that explains Mick Jagger. That also explains Spicoli from Fast Time. Yeah. Fucking Sean Penn. Yeah. He's turned into a fucking lesbian. Yeah. Remember got when tits uh, and everything? Remember Crazy. when Sean Penn? Yeah, he's got the fucking. He's got a better rack than than uh, Farmer Billy. Um, remember I've when Sean Penn went on? Farmer Billy Come made on. the. Sean Penn made the press rounds and was endorsing the idea of using our nuclear arsenal. He was actually, Sean Penn was the one on TV making the argument of like, why do we even have these nukes if we're just never even going to use them? You know, everybody likes to play with their toys, Jonah. Wow. Wow, Sean Penn. But, you know, um, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but, because, um, you know, I made a song with El Chapo. Um, right. On the vocals there, the the one that I did, uh, of course, in Spanish, Chapultepec, talking about uh, Los Niños Héroes, the, the hero boys of the Chapultepec uh, Boys Military School. That, uh, uh, fought against the uh, U.S. cavalry, led by um, well, the the two leading officers that led the charge on Chapultepec were uh, uh, Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant, fighting side by side, kicking some Mexican ass. Okay. And then when they what Mexican American War? Yes, um, one 18... of four. Was that 1830s, 1840s, somewhere in that 1832 range? 1832 to 1838. Yeah. yeah. Um, James Polk's War. President Polk. Polk's War. Um, yeah, because again, there's only been, what, 17 years in the history of the entire uh, uh, United States that it hasn't been at war with officially. Some, something. Officially, yeah. but that's not including conflict. Another thing, right? I don't think that I, I counts dare to say the war the on United drugs States, either, but that that doesn't matter because there were other. I, wars I dare going to say on. that yeah. the United States has never been at peace. Has it's what? An endless conquest, an endless conquering empire, until it's conquered itself. Everything, it's everything conquered. that has a beginning, Yona, has an end. Just because we haven't seen it yet doesn't mean that it's non-existent. Oh, it's here. We're looking at it. Maybe. Dare I say, the U.S. Empire is like Wile E. Coyote. It has already gone off the cliff. Just hasn't looked down yet. And God forbid whenever anybody, like everyone just looks down and realizes we're already off the edge of the cliff. Time for an Acme parachute, I guess. Consult the Acme company. So I guess they so decided. Anyways, uh, um, I got way sidetracked. Yeah. The, the Ukraine and the state of Zion are similar in that they're both doing this expansion. Oh, that's right. We did get sidetracked. Rhetoric of a greater Khazaria project and a greater state, a greater Israel project. Right. And the greater Israel project extends from the Nile all the way to Turkey. Correct. From the Med all the way to the Persian Gulf. Correct. Even into and, uh, some parts of uh, Western Iran. Saudi Arabia. Or what we used to call Persia. pretty much a southern ally and in many regards a southern part of Israel. I think Persia is That's still a superior wild. name. That's what's wild. Now, if the Saudis, if the Saudi royal family ever breaks rank, 
uh, then they'll be put in check By because it, it's it's the bankers and the Zionists that have elevated and keep the Sauds elevated in power across Saudi Arabia because without Lawrence of Arabia and the British, there is no kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Correct. Anyway, anyway. Probably shouldn't I don't, talk I too much about I can't see Saudi the Arabia. Of Saud I do have, doing that though. Like I'm that doesn't make any with sense. Some musicians. Uh, I, I probably shouldn't even say their names, but um, there's two guitar players, uh, and one of them is. Yeah, so it, it's kind of, you know, I mean, I would hate to be the reason that like one of my bandmates ends up like. Uh, shredded and put into a diplomatic bag like Jamal Khashoggi or something. I mean, that... Well, that would they, suck. They, they're, they're thuggish and ruggish over that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they... They they take their uh, their sharpened edges very seriously. I mean, they're na- the, the national dance for Saudi Arabia involves everyone holding a sword and acting like you're beheading people. While you dance with the sword, um, it's a peaceful society. Peaceful. I can't even get down rights. with that, though. I wouldn't. The, that wouldn't the, necessarily the be thing. a bad thing. I would love to see Danny Trejo doing the Saudi dance in a line with the Saudis, but with his there machete. There you go. There you go. That would slap. Absolutely. That would slap. People would beat down the door to get to that, too. Or They'd better throw yet. Throw money at you. Better yet, on Saturday, um, decap- on Decapitation Saturday, when they've got that yummy pistachio ice cream at the square right there in the middle of uh, uh, Medina Arayad. Um, I said I was going to talk about this. Anyways, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Capital city, Riyadh, they got the square and decapitation Saturday. Imagine how entertaining it would be to the crowd if right after one of those peasants gets their head chopped off with a sword, Danny Trejo pops up on stage, fleeing with the fucking machete. That would fucking slap. Give me another pistachio ice cream. I'm so glad we brought the kids to Saudi Arabia. I wonder what there's to see in Damam. We're going there tomorrow. Anyway, I've been to, uh, you know, still, what, I've are been they to still Dubai. doing public executions in Saudi Arabia? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Good for them. But we, I think we need not, more of that. Try not to focus on the whole decapitating head part and put more attention on the fact that the pistachio ice cream is to die for. It's really good. But don't eat it too fast. Brain freeze. You know, I have not had pistachio since I was a little kid. And I hated it then. I thought it was like the worst thing ever. But now I love pistachios. I should probably try it again. Oh, my God. Unfortunately, I think my time to do that is running out. The pistachio milkshake from Basket and Robin. Oh, wow. Oh, my. So is what what like it's what ACL shit, son. And what you know, it's it, only ten dollars. <laughs> what's what I'm saying? Well, like what level is Inflation's that? Inflation is good for you. What would you compare that to? Like value wise. Like it's as good as mm, the pistachio milkshake is as good as Texas brisket. All right. Where it's got the where it's got the char on it mm-hmm. and like crunch mm-hmm. and like, I mean, when, when when you cut a slice of it and then you cut it into bite sized pieces to eat, it's literally like four or five different kinds of meat depending on which part you're eating, mm. what color it is. Like, are you getting the char? Are you getting the, just? It's a flavor festival. Texas brisket, because I've had briskets other type beef brisket and it all just tastes the same it right. tastes good it's but right. it's all the same note 
Right. Whereas Texas brisket, it's like combining Metallica with symphonic music, which lucky for you listeners out there, that's already been done. Yep. Um, not the biggest fan. Not the biggest fan, but then again, mm. I'm not really like a Mannheim steamroller type fan either. But, but that's because I don't like their style of music, and I don't like Christmas music. So that that's a double negative, which is still a negative. Yeah, you know this might su- this might surprise <laughs> folks, Yona. Uh, I actually don't really care for Metallica much at all. Like I could, I could go the rest of my life without hearing Metallica ever again, and I would be perfectly fine. Well, was it that song "Whiskey in a Jarro"? I don't think I've even heard that one. Whiskey in a Jarro. I can, I can tell you this: I listened to "Kill 'Em All" because I had that at one point. I all listened right. to "And Justice for All" because I had and that MOP. Yeah, surely you've done MOP and and uh, ride the lightning. Master I don't of think Puppets. I had Master I, of Puppets. I might have. I might have. I know I didn't have Ride the Lightning. I thought that was the the dumbest title for an album. That's why I didn't get it. I was like, that's just stupid. Because I didn't. Well, I didn't even understand like why the the other kids at that time were listening to it. I was like, eh, it's all right, but. Like, I've got better shit than this. Well, Lars is a dick. Yeah, and true. It's all about yeah, that, intellectual that is property actually rights. That is true, everything. ladies and gentlemen. Um, That's true. Lars Ulrich. Because He's it's the, true. Uh, percussionist, the drummer, fucking dweeb. Yeah. Um, you know, Kirk Hammett's kind of cool. James Hetfield, uh, all right. Um, but, you know, musically, um, I I just I always kind of was digging Metallica, good headbanging music, and then that song "Whiskey in a Jarro" came out, and and then that fucking S and M album, hmm. and uh, well, I guess the word got back to them that they had angered and pissed off and ran off so many fans that they tried to to rekindle the magic with that recent um you ask any married couple it's they difficult put out and um yeah all, all, i just kept hearing whiskey in a jar every I, I just it, it's the same way that harps ruined bon scott for me uh, okay. You know, All right. I used to be the biggest ACDC fan, and I was a kind of a purist, and I liked Bon Scott ACDC more than Brian Johnson. Well, now I would lean more toward Brian Johnson, but I'm just done with ACDC. Eh, I, don't know. I I always liked uh, Bon Scott's the the way his voice fit into the music. I always thought yeah. was was much uh, just felt more natural than me Brian too. Johnson. You know, but now when I see Bon Scott, he's playing a fucking oboe and wearing a fucking smock. Oh, it doesn't well, matter see, what you, video, you it doesn't allowed what somebody song. else to do that to you. I don't. I again, I don't have that problem. I can separate those things. It doesn't matter. It's just music. It's all right. That's all right. I'm going to take one of those Bon Scott songs where he's playing a recorder, and I'm going to I'm going to make it pimp. I'm going to remix it. There you I, go. I'll take that as a challenge. Fuck yeah. I might even just throw in Duran Duran on top of it. Hey, throw it just on. Just fuck with Death to Tyrants. Throw it just, on. Just yes. Sure, yeah. On throw, it, purpose, throw it on TikTok, deliberately. man. Deliberately. Yeah. You never know what might blow up. He's not even in the chat. Yeah, dude, there's a Probably. clip from the Unjected interview that I posted to TikTok yesterday that's just going fucking nuts. People are all over it. It's crazy. 
absolutely crazy. Well, well, what are you talking about in the clip? Uh oh, it was the one where um crap, what's her name? I can't remember her name. I'm too high at the moment. Shelby. It was the the one where Shelby was talking about the flash frozen people. Like the people frozen in place where they were burned alive. Oh As yeah, when they you were like talking about moving at all. there when they were frozen from the yeah. uh was it Vesuvius eruption Pompeii. there. Yeah. Pompeii. Yeah. And they're all in these poses and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, last time I checked, it was over uh, 22,000 views. And, like, people were commenting left and right, liking it left and right, sharing it left and right. It's nuts. Oh, cool. Maybe you'll get to go on a TikTok adventure like our friend Terry Wolf did. That'll be I'm something. I might. They, they, I think they were upset with us when I published that one. I don't think they took it down. I, I, I like how that they did limit started it. out. Uh, when, when you're like, so what's your claim to fame? He's like, well, actually, I'm also a former TikToker. <laughs> oh, former? What do you mean? <laughs> oh, do tell. And he did. Uh, well, for more uh, on that. Uh, that was pretty much at the point I decided I want that title, too. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's kind of like we're making Eagle Scout. For bad media, huh. and you, know, you got to get all your little merit badges That's together. Right. <laughs> Independent media merit badge Thursday <coughs> on Get Fact Harder, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. So that so that you know, by the time it's all said and done. Liberty Radio will be able to sit atop everyone else in independent media and determine who's telling the truth and who's not. That's right. Yeah, I just had that the most soon? brilliant idea. Too direct of a shot. Um, you know, we we could be making a lot of money doing this show. If we, uh, you know, there was a troll on YouTube pointing that out to me earlier today. Corporate sponsors, and we could, that. like, you know, have like a special, uh, your cool club, and um, there's so much stuff we could do to monetize this. You want to know the truth or not? Or are you going to have to pay, bitch? Okay. I don't know. Everybody, I, I kind of like this lane we're in, though. So many other people are doing that. Mm-hmm. And I don't really give a fuck about the money. And I don't really give a fuck about what other people think. In fact, I don't really have any fucks to give. That's why I just keep, you know, we, we just keep facting people harder. Because, I mean, if the truth hurts your feelings, good, then it's working. That's right. Safe and effective. Because it's the lies and the bullshit that's supposed to make you feel all warm and gooey inside. Yeah. The truth is supposed to make you, like, at times, horrified and nauseous. Yeah. Depending on how you're doing it. What? Yeah. What the fuck? No shit. Hell, I thought, well, I guess not. God damn, that's fucked up. There you go. I just summed up American history. Yeah. Well, no, I've all gotten, of it. I've gotten to the point now that I, I think I've pretty much figured out if, if it if it makes me feel good, if it gives me like warm fuzzies, yeah, it's probably not not it's good. Bullshit. Yeah, it's total bullshit. It's bullshit. You're you're tasting the monosodium glutamate again, my friend. No. The umami factor. Someone's. Tried to titillate your yum senses. So they're making the push now for, you know, essentially the the surveillance state, which will morph into the bio-surveillance state, which will morph into your brave new world. All right. Facial scan me harder, daddy. Yeah. United Nations is getting everybody on board or has gotten everybody on board now this week because all that bullshit is over now. You know, speaking of which, 
we, we always talk about China with the facial scan and the social credit score, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But I wonder how many people are aware of just how down for the count and same sheet of music fucking Vladdy Poots is oh, over yeah. in Russia. Oh, dude, it's like, like uh, the surveillance in Russia is almost as bad as it is in the United States at this point. Have you ever thought about interviewing? And, and actually um, about to surpass it before too much longer. Have you ever thought about interviewing um, Pasta or Fee together or separately? Because mm, Fee moved to Moscow and Fee's, Fee Arell has lived in Moscow now for what? year and a half? Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting to hear her take on you know, what's it like now a year and a half in living in Moscow and having to have your face scanned every time you buy anything anywhere. That's got to be awkward. Oh, I good part of life. You go along, get along. I don't know. Lots, lots of questions. Yeah. You, you know what? Like, it, that would probably be a short interview is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you know, Which is probably, I would probably also be I interested done it. to know, like, um, what's it like to join a state media organization that's in the middle of open combat? Does it kind of slap like propaganda, or are they the good guys and everybody else sucks? Because, I mean, to me, you know, empire and propaganda is not a proprietary thing of just Americans. Every country produces propaganda. Every country has state media. Every country has empire of some type or it wouldn't exist. Mm, I'll push back on that because some countries are just vassal states of other countries. So while they give the appearance of, you know, uh, autonomy, they don't really have it. They're, they're just little, they're little zombie states. Well, in that regard, again, without empire, they wouldn't exist. Yeah. Because without their protectorate um, noble state, they are lovingly betrothed to, the vassal state would cease to exist. Like, for example, if the United States and all the Western powers just cut off all the money from Israel, it would collapse. And it's gone. It's the same with the Ukraine. And it's gone. Same with Ukraine. Which is insane when you consider all of the different industries that are influenced by Israelis. Uh-huh. Like they they've got their hands in in businesses running into the trillions of dollars, and yet, if they did not receive foreign aid, the economy in the country would just absolutely collapse. How does that work? It's called outsourcing. When you outsource your security costs, when you outsource your medical costs when you outsource and offload all these other costs, then that leaves more profits to reap at Vanguard and State Street and BlackRock and elsewhere. Because <laughs> they all own each other. It's just one big... Yeah. Um, locking directorates. I would call it a dodecahedron double Dutch rudder. It's a lot of flying elbows and flying splooge. I seen somebody break it down one day with like colors of mm. who owns what. And, and it just kept making it blacker and blacker and blacker. And filling well, the up problem the is you can't ever actually figure out who owns it because you can't get past the corporate shells, which is the oh, whole reason did. why they were put in place in the first place. So you couldn't actually get to video. the names. He he kept going through, and, and finally we find out that most of all of it is, uh, oh, there, there was like, maybe, I, do you know the video I'm talking about? 
I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I should probably find that. Maybe I watch a lot of videos. It like he broke down who actually owns um, BlackRock mm -hmm. with graphs and did this whole image thing. Pretty cool. Well, I know Let one of the I... owners is Larry Fink. Right. But again, I don't think he even has. Uh, I don't think he has controlling interest in the company even. Right. Okay. Yeah. See, it was not. It was not on YouTube. Oh, it, oh, it was on Telegram. Oh well, fuck it. It's gone. Uh, which I could but find it, but like of the, the government the, of France now. Good luck. Oh yeah, yeah. So how long till Telegram's just Dunsky? I I think we've hit that. Are point. they going to kill it? No, they're not going to kill it. They're going to do the same thing that they did with Twitter, the same thing they did with Facebook, the same thing that they did, that they did with Signal. They're going to hollow it out, make it a shell yeah. of itself, and make it suck. They're going to use it as a data scraper. Because again, the framework that is being installed is going to connect all of your various accounts to you, to your right. single unique identifier, which will be your digital ID. Everything else is extraneous to that. But they had to be able to incorporate that functionality into Telegram in order for that all to work. So that's why they tricked Durov into getting on a plane and going and having lunch with Macron and then threw him in jail when he arrived. Yeah. Very sinister. And I'm sure probably Very. tortured him until he agreed to do whatever the fuck it was that they wanted. Which may or may not be exactly what I just described previously. Wow. Well, there goes Telegram. I like Telegram. I put so much shit on there. There, That's the point, is there are no safe platforms. They don't exist. I don't think they ever will. Because look, no. look at what happened to Float. That's the only one that I know of for sure where there there were no connections to the banking world or big tech or anything like that. As far as I know, again, if somebody has information that I don't, I'm willing to hear it. But That's they, they were not saying. able to continue operations because they got smothered out of the marketplace. I'm going to keep saying till the day I die. Uh oh! I think Bluffdale the more, might have just checked in. Uh, the more connected you are digitally, the closer you are to death, and the more connected you are to the natural world, the closer you are to life. Technology is not neutral. No. Technology is binary. Technology, the, the, the state of technology is decided by the user. Mm -hmm. Technology can either create or destroy. It can be a tool or a weapon. It all depends on how you wield it. But it's not neutral. It's a positive or a negative force, depending on how it's used and in right. whose hands. But it's not neutral. And I mean, the way these technological improvements and digitization, digitalization of so many things um, is all sold as convenience and improvements in life and society. But to me, again, I guess I'm making the great IRL lamentation here, but um, it's important to 
know your actual neighbors and surroundings and what creek you live on and where it goes to be able to navigate. And instead, most people today probably even couldn't make it between work and home without their GPS functioning. And a lot of people now in today's society, without their phone, would just lose the shit. Many of them do. Yeah. I mean, I know with my darling better half, she completely lost it when her phone died. Wow. Never, never seen such grief in my life. It's like, it was like when her brother died. Wow. That's that's very uh that's very telling. Yeah. So they wow. A lot of people have become so attached to their phones, they're inseparable without it. I'm not saying anything that's profound. I mean it's just Played and obvious for everyone to see, and everyone knows people in their lives. Maybe you're one of them. It's completely inseparable from the phone now because it was designed to be that way. Correct. I I just think of it as an ankle monitoring bracelet, mm. <laughs> and it's cute to me. All the shit that just downloads itself on the phone, all these Sudoku and Bingo and gambling apps and. Stuff. I don't play any of that shit. I didn't download any of that. What the fuck is that on there for? I try to get rid of it. I can't even fucking get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Then I keep getting them fucking text messages. Now I get text messages like I got one today from area code 580. 580? Which is uh, Oklahoma. Panhandle of Oklahoma. Really? Um, but anyways, you know, this, is, this could be... This is from an unknown number. This could be spam, blah, blah, blah. I get the warning. and I open up the text. How are you? Heart emoji. Hmm. I'm like, uh, who is this? And then I don't get a response. And then I type in, I don't know anybody from the panhandle of Oklahoma. The only people I know in Oklahoma around Tahlequah and that's not 580 area code so then I finally get the message back oh this is Emma I have a great career opportunity and blah 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 oh yeah yeah I've been getting those they're on Telegram they're on Rumble they're fucking everywhere but on the bright side um actually I, I got one together... from Indeed today wow I was like what the fuck is this shit? They're everywhere. Well, I, I think the last time I was talking about Strodes and the song Strodeo, and I've got the lyrics put together. I still haven't recorded the vocal track for that song, but I put the instrumental together, and I, I've already shared Strodeo, the instrumental, again, on the Telegram, the uh, Newsy channel. Yeah. yeah. Grand Theft World Newsy channel. Um, so I was banging that because it's just infective. Um, an infective beat. So I was banging that, uh, making a delivery in Huntington there. And uh, when I got up to the uh, porch, everyone's like dancing and vibing. They're like, man, that fucking slaps. Who's that? I was like, that's my music. And right about that time, it, it comes out real loud over the speakers. Live from the 300 and foe. They're like, oh, shit. Nice. Like, yeah, man, this is some WV music. It's some Hilljack music. And so he's like, well, dude, where can I get your music? So I picked up, like, new subscribers. Nice. Tonight. And so now I've got a new tactic. I'm obviously going to have to start pushing my music on everyone that I deliver in order to make sure that I maintain more subscribers on my Rumble channel than uh, Grand Theft World because you're getting you're nipping right at my heels. 
I it was is, at 144 uh, and you were at 141, but I know I picked up some a couple more today. So. Yeah, I, I think we're about to hit the crazy explosive growth stage, uh, yeah. which I, I didn't actually anticipate it this early. I knew it was coming eventually, uh, but I think probably within the next three months is when it's going to happen, which is going to be crazy. Well, the 20,000 views on the TikTok clip, that's going to... You get all those TikTok eyeballs. Wait, yeah, and that's the problem. Is it? It raises the profile significantly from yeah. where it was before that moment, which is something that is going to have to be accounted for in the strategy. Because again, like I say, I was not anticipating it quite this early. Well, I, I figured it would blow up. I just didn't think it would be so fast. Oh, apparently that's how it happens. Like you remember uh the Twitter account when we got back from Colorado was when the Twitter account went over a thousand followers. Yeah. We we either just did or are about to surpass eleven hundred. So it's only been a couple of months, basically. We gained another hundred followers on Twitter. And I barely ever fucking post on Twitter anymore because it's just a cesspool. I can't even really stand being on there to do the stuff that I use it for. It's just terrible. It's just feeding me shit that, that makes me want to hate everyone around me. I honestly don't remember the last time I was on Twitter. It's been oh, yeah, There's no point to be on Twitter. It's it's just people running their mouths about shit they don't even know anything about, but they've convinced themselves that they're smarter than everybody else. Wow. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I they can remember everybody last on Twitter week, is data siloed, and they don't even fucking realize it. Last week, I checked my MySpace, and I had a new message from Tom, by the way. Tom <laughs> says hi. How's Tom um, doing? <clears throat> not so well i miss that guy um well he's gotten all the vaccines and he's got the rona again poor tom um but uh yeah i was actually on myspace last week but i can't honestly remember the last time i was on twitter it's been weeks literally been weeks um and i guess i could go on tonight um MySpace or Twitter or yeah, no, just why? Why would you? Why? I mean, why would you? Why would you do Sudoku boxes with numbers for hours? I don't know. I, you know. Whatever floats your boat. We don't judge here. You know, keep those wind in your sails. Keep keep the sun on your shoulders. Oh wow, this is crazy. So we're 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 broadcasting live in all the all the normal places, right? Odyssey and Rumble and Bitshoot, uh, Twitch. Twitch, Telegram, uh, right. Radio eighty four twenty four dot com, and all other places. We're also right now playing on uh, the new Prisoners Channel TMP twenty four seven. Not Blamo. not this broadcast, one of the previous broadcasts, but. So we're we're oh, like cool. literally occupying the same space in time. Wait, now are we on two different Band broadcasts? Because I really I would really like to watch this on my Rockfin app on the cell phone. Fuck Rockfin. <laughs> Fuck all of that bullshit. <laughs> I'm so happy that I never completed the Rockfin account. You have no idea, no idea. I, at all. I, I did it twice, and and they just stonewalled me. I, I suck. I, I apparently got approved, and when I saw like all the bullshit that you had to do just to set up your account, I was like, I got other shit to do. I ain't got time for this. Why can't I just do like a username, put up some fucking JPEGs, and be done with this shit? And, you know, it seems like... I don't know how Rockfin turned into like a a rat trap or, or a roach motel for independent media, but it kind of seems like a Hotel California type 
thing. Yeah, I well, mean, it was it, a it, Trojan horse. You know, I mean, I like the community on Rock Fin, and I love all the chats on Rock Fin because it's so intimate. It's pretty much the same handful of people. Yeah, and which is what you call it. an echo chamber. Yeah, there's just, I mean, uh, oh, once, one time, and it's been over a year and a half ago, I happened to be on Rockfin and saw that there was this one channel of um, MAGA chuds or whatever that normally were on Rumble, but they were trying out the Rockfin. They tried it out for one or two episodes and then said, eh, fuck Rockfin, and deleted it and left. But the the one show that I tuned in to, they were at like four or 5,000 viewers. I've never, ever seen anything else like that, ever. I've never, ever seen any, any I've never seen anything over a thousand. Mm-hmm. They were like over 5,000. Usually, you, you, if you have like more than a hundred viewers on Rockfin, you're like killing it. I don't know. That's why AM Wake Up rules fucking Rockfin. I really don't know. That and maybe the last American Vagabond used to be, but mm. um, you see, well, the whole thing with Rockfin is their whole premium thing. And anyways, I'm already bored talking about Rockfin. <laughs> um, and you know what? Well, I mean, this I, is this I, is. I, I do want to point out to the audience. You know, Go we've ahead been and throw teasing some dirt the audience the for we. Drizzle and I have teased this audience for months Ever since on the end beginning, that we would mention Ukraine and actually go into the Ukraine. And I would like to think that tonight I ain't going nowhere. Is the what are you first talking about? Fucking time that we ever said more than one or two words about it. Quite possibly. I don't know. Feels Maybe. like a momentous occasion. Nah. I can't believe Cokie Smurf hasn't been um, slid into the burning pit beneath the um, Dr. Evil table yet. I think he's Someone's still gonna useful. push that button and then his chair's gonna slide right down into it. You know how it goes. Yeah. Well, he's he's president for life now. So, um, until something happens, he's gonna be around. You know, till they need to put somebody else in that spot, and then he'll not be around anymore. It's pretty much how that works. If Zelensky and the wife get rid of their condo in Miami Dade, then I'll say, yeah, he's set for life. But so long as he keeps his drip tater condo in Miami Dade, like so many drip taters have, I mean, how many drip taters has? Uh, the old pickle factory put up down there, Miami. I mean, geez, you got Juan Guaido, you got fucking, um, oh, yeah. what was the other one? Manuel Noriega, you had, yeah. um, Shaw of Iran. Um, it's a who's who of drip taters. Well, that, I mean, that it's, have enjoyed it's a nice the A1A and US Route 1 Dixie Highway. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one of one of the most uh, beautiful parts of, of the United States, according to the people that live there. And then there's all the Cuban exiles and all the, um, I think, well, I guess they would be more like terrorists, like Carrillo and some of the others. And then there's the, um, oh, what were they called over there um, in Cambodia? Brought a whole bunch of them over too. Um, huh. Are you talking about refugees? Um, the not the Khmer. Oh, what are they called? Uh, let, me, let me see. Let's see. Uh, Cam- Pol Pot's regime, right? Yeah, Cambodia ethnic group. I thought that was the Khmer. 
Let me see. Um, yeah, the Khmer people. Yeah. That's what they're called. Uh, maybe. Or, let's see. Let me see. if it, Maybe it wasn't allowed. Yeah, because uh, Pol Pot, Come uh, on. the Khmer That's Rouge. It. I found it. No, what? they're from Laos, the group I'm talking about. They're the Hmong. Oh, the Hmong, H- yeah. The H-M-O-N-G. Yeah, Hmong. you don't you don't actually pronounce the H, though. It's just Hmong. Right, it, the Hmong, the Hmong people. Um, of course, if you're British, you say H-Mong. Yeah, the H-Mong. Uh, oh, it's it's difficult. They to have that. their own spoken and written language, unrelated to others. Well, yeah, the Hmong. So let's see, Hmong, U.S. war hero. Have we sufficiently pissed off everyone yet tonight? And there he is. Has anyone le- been left out? Vong Pao. And there, yep, there he is. Okay, all right. It's called Get Fact Harder because we do shit like this. Uh oh. Blam. All right, Philip Cross. Tell us about Vong Pao. The surname is Vong. Yeah, okay. Vong Pao. Major general in the Royal Lao Army and a leader of the Hmong American community in the United States. No longer with, served in the French Army, the Royal Lao Army, and uh, was a major ally to U.S. forces during um, Operation uh, Rolling Thunder. Oh, yeah. Remember, Bombing the fuck out of the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Yeah. And which included not just Vietnam, but Laos. Laos and Cambodia. And Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. The whole region. Basically, basically. all of what was, because all of that was just even one, Even some of uh, what we now call Myanmar. Just, just for right, good measure. Burma. Yeah. Just, to, just so Burma. they don't get out of line. Yeah. Um, but all of that was part of l'Indochine Francaise, or French Indochina, yeah. Yeah. Uh, until Dien Bien happened. We, we then, seem to uh, have this habit of going in and taking over former French colonial regions for some reason. Uh, I don't understand. Might have something to do know, with Ben Franklin, but I'm not quite sure. Lebanon and Syria are former French colonies. Sykes Pico, right? Hello. So that's Vog Pal. Uh, aha. He was the only ethnic Hmong to attain the rank of general officer in the Royal Lao Army, and he was loyal to the King of Laos while remaining a champion of the Hmong people. During the 60s and 70s, he commanded the Secret Army, also known as the Hmong Army, a highly effective Central Intelligence Agency trained and supported force that fought against the Pathet Lao and the People's Army of Vietnam. Hmm. That's how he and all these Hmong refugees got brought into the United States. Bong Pao. Is that V A N G? Yep. V, like Fang, but Bong. Bong Pao. Uh, seems like uh, one of the guys you would fight at like the final stage of the game. He does. He, he, yeah. The last level. He's the yeah, he does look kind of like a Street Fighter ball. boss. Yeah, I mean. Like, maybe he's the one right before Chun-Li. 
Yeah, you got to do that sweeping kick with guile, and you got yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. I always <laughs> used to, I always <laughs> used to lose to Chun Li because I just stared at her tits the whole time. <laughs> Uh, but I mentioned um, Dien Bien. And I would say probably most people haven't heard of um, Dien Bien. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Right. Um, let's see, is that is that up there on screen? Uh, oh. It should be. Well, I for those that are listening it. on the radio, let me uh, use my radio voice here. Oh, please. Um, the Battle of Dien Bien Phu was a climactic confrontation of the First Indochina War that took place between 13 March and 7 May 1954. It was fought between the French Union's colonial Far East Expeditionary Corps and Viet Minh Communist Revolutionaries. The United States was officially not a party to the war, but it was secretly involved by providing financial and material aid to the French Union, which included CIA-contracted American personnel participating in the battle. The People's Republic of China and the Soviet Union similarly provided vital support to the Viet Minh including most of their artillery and ammunition. Um, fast forward to the end. Vietnamese kicked all their asses and they fucking ran. Run, bitch, run. And they fled and they mm. never came back. The Battle of Dien Bien Phu was decisive. The garrison was overrun in May after a two-month siege. Most of the French forces surrendered. Few men escaped aloud. Among the 11,721 French troops captured, wow. That's a lot of people. Wow. Well, so, the French give up easy. So, over 2,000 dead, over 1,700 missing, over almost 12,000 captured. They lost 62 aircraft and 10 tanks. 167 aircraft were damaged. Two CIA advisors killed as well. Vietnamese mm, figure... That number's not high enough. Uh, yeah. I see Vietnamese it. figures... Uh, 13,000 casualties of which 4,000 dead and 800 missing. French estimate, 8,000 dead or missing, over 16,000 wounded. Again, nearly 12,000 taken prisoner. So, um, they lost. The, the French and the Americans, they, they, they lost big time. Well, duh. Uh, but, then the U.S. went in, and that's when we had South Vietnam and North Vietnam. Um, and then we lost, too, again. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, Yoni, you know what the most uttered phrase in French is, don't you? Excusez-moi? No. Merde? No. Oh, wait. I know this. I surrender. Yeah. You're supposed to say I give up. But... I give up. <laughs> I surrender. Because that's what they do. Yeah, that's right. They're cheese-eating surrender monkeys. Uh, I don't remember where it was that I first heard that, so I can't I can't give out credit at the moment. But, yeah. We don't have to go back into the far ancient history. We don't have to go through the annals of time. Okay. Just look at the most recent 
um, Kerfuffle and Niger hmm. and Gabon hmm. over there along Recent the uh, uh, La Côte d'Ivoire or the Ivory Coast of um, Africa there along the eastern shores of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and um, the the not the the good folks in Niger told the French and the Americans to kindly get the fuck out. And the French got the fuck out. And the Americans were like, make me. But the French just tucked tailed and fled. Yeah. Well, that's what they do. Yeah, that's what they were trained for, so I mean they natural. had two and they had two massive bases. I would say their names, but I would slaughter it. And if I slaughter it, God knows no one else is going to even be able to pronounce it. Yeah, that's um, true. But they had two large bases. Um, one was at Ayuru. Ayuru? 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 No, Ayuru? Right. Anyways, um, yeah, see what I mean? And the other, So... Uh, two large bases of the um, Légionnaire Étranger, the the French Foreign Legion. So that's a big thing, you know, because they got the cool hat with the flappy part. <laughs> Pretty wild. I mean, that, they're they're, they're the flappy. Issue? They're the they're they're the flappy surrender hats. I mean, the the, the proper way to wear a French military hat. Is to hold your arms up like this. <laughs> All right, who else can we piss off? This is fun. I, 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 we really should go to the historical. I mean, this, this is. Were you aware that there that the Vietnamese captured twelve? Thousand fucking Frenchmen killed thousands. What did they do with them, though? Oh well, uh, like, I don't, I don't see. remember seeing like you know Vietnam hostage exchange programs or anything. Like I remember okay, the whole uh, POW MIA thing when I was growing up. Like our boys are still over there. We need to go get them. But I don't remember okay, there being like among- exchanges. Okay, uh, among the 11,721 French troops captured, 858 of the most seriously wounded were evacuated via the Red Cross mediation in May of 1954. Only 3,290 were returned four months later. The French government in Paris resigned. The new prime minister, the left of center Pierre Monde France, supported French withdrawal from Indochina. Hmm. So they pulled out. The battle of Bien Bien Phu was decisive. The war ended shortly afterward. In the 1954 Geneva Accords were signed. France agreed Hmm. to withdraw its forces from all its colonies in French Indochina. You know. While stipulating that Vietnam would be temporarily divided at the 17th parallel with control of the north given to the Viet Minh as the DRV under Ho Chi Minh and with huge support by the US the south became the state of Vietnam nominally under Emperor Bao Dai preventing Ho Chi Minh from gaining control of the entire country but not for long I've played my, uh, I think I've played my um, Psy It's Gone song on here before. I think so. I think so. Where they're pushing the helicopters into the sea. And yeah, yeah. Airlifting yeah, people off Yeah, the I think so, because I, I want to... Hmm. <laughs> And and then I mixed in I'm like uh, Hanoi, Hannah, 
Yeah, there's where a she's reason. like taunting the GIs. Oh, GI, you should just go home. Yeah, Your yeah, government yeah, yeah. lies to yeah. you. Yeah, we have. You're just that gonna one. die. There they was something give you going metal on after with an did. embassy, and they were uh, they were hearkening back to leaving Vietnam and the helicopter yeah. on top of the embassy. Wasn't that long ago? Is maybe like a year ago. I want to say. Oh, oh, I can't oh. remember exactly what it was though. Oh, they did it again. Yeah, yeah. They they yeah. had to evacuate by chopper again. Wasn't that in Kabul? Something that like was that. It was yeah. something like that. No, well, I think it was after Kabul because Kabul was uh, August of two thousand twenty-one. Oh, and of course we weren't. We weren't Liberty Radio. wasn't even broadcasting. Where yet. did we? Because there was another. There was something though. There was something else involving an embassy. I can't remember what it was. Nobody well, in the live stream did, chat seems to know either. They did they have probably to think evacuate we're nuts. the American embassy in Kabul with helicopters because they were no longer able to safely transport on the ground from the embassy in Kabul over to the uh, airport there. Is this? All right. So Heavy D in the Odyssey live stream chat. That's Dylan, by the way. Right. Heavy D. Uh, shout out Heavy D. He says he wants to know if you know about the Wolin Massacre. W-O-L-Y-N. Wolin. Yeah, I've heard of that. All right. Well, there's your answer. Um, I think, I think that's when a bunch of Polacks got killed. <coughs> Talking about the Bolin Massacre? I guess. With a V, not a W. Well, he put it in with a W. So maybe that's the, the German spelling? Yeah, because you know how they are with the V and the W. Right. Right, they're fucking retarded. Uh, but that what that's about Spain? Like, what uh, can we say about Spain? Like, um, so like, Volin was like, uh, we're talking about the southern part of the Ukraine like where it borders um, Moldavia and uh, Romania, like you would call it. Um, it's actually called Galicia, I think. Uh, but anyways, a uh, bunch of Polacks there. And it was those... It's a uh, strange place for them. It was those Stepan Banderite, um, those Banderite Waffen SS type Nazi motherfuckers that just massacred like tens upon tens of thousands just genociding poles um the ukrainians again there there's a there's a long history of animosity um uh, between ukrainians and polacks and that's one of the reasons why um anyway. well, i would imagine so You know, you murder a bunch of people that other people care about tends to make them angry. I'm trying to think Ooh. of an example in history when that hasn't happened. Oh, and by the way, uh, empty, Heavy D, uh, right now the high Yona is higher than a fart trapped in spandex. Looks like a mouse running around in there. It just can't find the air yet. When it does, hold your breath. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely higher than the Clinton body count tonight. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. That was a pretty good day. Yeah. I gotta say, um it's kinda nice coming back home and like 
speaking to people that speak English as a first language and, um, you know, they don't have fancy shoes or, um, what were you, you out that? in Springfield Jewel. again? Uh, worse. Columbus. Oh, I was going to say Cleveland. I've been hitting Columbus hard and it, I, I just, I, I'm discovering that like there's all these pockets of town now that like well these are all Nepalis. Mm -hmm. This whole part of town, I thought it was Mexican, but it's actually not. They're not. They're from El Salvador. They're not from Mexico, because that's why the MS-13 is on all the bridges. Anyways, um, uh. It, it, it's it, it's just staggering like to go two days and only see like one white person huh and then that that is a little home, strange and, in ohio i would think and then to come back to like huntington and like huh. i never saw a single foreigner all night just a bunch of rednecks and hilljacks and it felt comforting That was a bit intense. It's like I was in a foreign country. It's working in Columbus is like working overseas. It feels like because every yeah, day I, can I see that. use. I love it because I get the. I mean, I got to speak German, French, Spanish, Italian. Today, just today, yesterday, got that speaking Arabic. That never happens in West Virginia. Never. They do good to speak English around here, much less foreign languages. Huh. That's really, I just, and and they're all new arrivals. All of them. Interesting. God. It, this isn't people like walking new within across the last fence. year or new within this the last month. This is people being bussed in, being flown in. You know, the one I was talking to in Germany, they hmm. took the train. But I mean, they they were from uh, Syria, but they've been in, li living in Germany because there's so many Middle Easterners that have all just piled into Germany. Now they're spilling out because Germany's busting at the seams. Oh yeah. Oh well, but they're gonna add another uh, what is it quarter quarter million uh, Kenyans or something? We covered it a That's while back. The other thing. I got to speak Italian with some Ethiopians, and they uh, they all left Italy. They left of course, Italy. Italy is Italy is the main migrant path. Just like most migrants into America come up through Mexico, most migrants into Europe come up through. Uh, Sicily and Italy from the toe right up the boot yeah. all the way up into Europe um, because they cross the sea from uh, either Libya or Tunisia and land on either uh, Lampedusa or Stromboli or one of the other Sicilian islets that's right next to mainland sicily as it were sicily's the largest island in the mediterranean sea it's bigger than many countries just yeah. the island itself but there's like hundreds of islets that are like right mm -hmm. close to sicily's coastline yeah it's, one it's of the made of volcanoes the world where you can yeah you can still they're all like own little volcanoes island. that have just sprouted up, and oh, there's another island. Yeah, because uh, uh, Sicily is both. Uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, tectonic activity there, mm -hmm. earthquakes, and uh, constant volcanic eruptions, thanks to uh, Mount Etna or Mount Etna, which is also kind of strange um they built their amusement park which is the mount etna amusement park like 
right by Mount Etna. People go there, ride the roller coasters and stuff while they're being pelted with fucking stones. Because when Mount Etna is almost constantly erupting, and it's usually erupting like these little pieces of like about the size of peas, except they're hot burning like pumice rocks. It's almost like snow. People have to sweep it off their porch. Wow. Anyway. No, I was just looking at uh, the region that Italy is in. That's absolutely crazy. The region? Yeah. Because if you, if you compare it, um, what would that be, latitudinally uh-huh. to the United States, it's like uh, New England is in the, the same, like, you know, on the same line uh-huh. as Italy. But they have, like, wildly different weather. Well, yeah. Like, That's crazy. Sicily, Sicily is basically like living in a desert. Sicily is like... Well, it's probably a lot Oc- like Israel. Oh, no. Endless fucking summer in Sicily. God, it's fucking hot. And, like, there's different cactuses and shit that grow there. Like, I mean, you got to understand, Sicily borders Tunisia and Libya and the Sahara Desert. Yep. And the Sahara Desert has now gobbled up about, well, over 10%. It's probably about the lower eighth, one eighth of Spain is now just completely fucking desertified oh wow and it's all just creeping northward so it's, it's already above north. zaragoza and madrid because you know when when i took the ave train because uh, we landed at uh um aeropuerto barajas the the main uh hmm. airport there in madrid and had to go down to um uh atoha Atocha, A T O C H A, Atocha, the the or Atoka, uh, but the the main ass um, train station. Spoke more than we weeks. got on the Ave train. That phenomenal, awesome, kick ass mass transit systems in Madrid. Brand spanking new fucking subway lines all over the place. <clears throat> major, you know, standard gauge rail, heavy, heavy rail fucking subway lines everywhere. But, uh, so we get on the train. Now I can remember looking out the windows and just mile, I mean, mile after mile of all of these olive groves and everything just all dried up, tumbleweeds and just sand as far as and then, like, you wow. would see uh, where they're, like, taking bulldozers and trying to make these wind breaks and planting pine trees and doing everything they can to try to stop. Because the, the wind is taking the sand, and it just keeps pushing the sand dunes, and it's just bad. Oh, it's bad. All the way to Barcelona. That entire fucking rail line from Madrid through um, Zaragoza to um, Barcelona. And then, like, oh, my God, Barcelona. Oh, the smell. Oh, my God. Because, you know, the, the smell of Barcelona just all over the city because of, like, the when the high tide comes in, all of the sewers run backwards. Like around Las Ramblas, downtown. Oh, wow. It's just an overpowering smell of poop. Yeah. Barcelona smells like. Now you a know why big... they pronounce it Barcelona. Yeah, they because they, cause they got their nose. You don't really blood. want to open your mouth. You might right. get one of those shit eating flies to land on your tongue or something. You don't want that. 
And that's another reason why, you know, the, the main food in Barcelona are the tapas, which is just bite-sized food. Right. Just That way you don't have to use a spoon or a fork yeah. or anything. You can just pop it in your mouth real quick and get your lips closed again before you taste the poop in the air. But it's a very salty. It, it's like a mixture of fish fuck and poop. It, it's really something. And then, of course, there's the pickpockets. And... Sounds like yeah, fun. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and and worst of all, most of them choose to speak their own made up fucking language, Catalonian. Bonas, bonas, una taula, para dos, si us plau. We're going to speak pigeon Spanish and make everyone else do it, too. It's got, like, Dutch words. It's got Italian. It's got French. It's got their own words. Why, why don't they just go with Esperanto? You know? Just piss Catalonian, Catalonian is so gay and fucked up. It makes Esperanto sound cool. Is it as bad as French? It's like the snobbiest, snobbiest form of French. But so like a whole Quebec? bunch of that double vowel Dutch shit mixed in. Whoa. So like, imagine if you mix that just doesn't Mr. Sound Slave. Pleasant. It, imagine if you mixed Mr. Slave with the Swedish chef. There's Catalonian right there. Mm, bork, bork with a French accent. Mm. That, that, there you go. Mm, bork, 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 bork. Yeah, man. Yeah, totally. Oh my goodness. It's, a, it's a French Swedish chef. So I believe, I believe Yona, uh, we, we may be able to actually report live news before we go off the air. Let's see. Oh, yeah? Dang. Breaking news! Yeah, oh, I, believe, I believe Hurricane Helene has uh, has made landfall. Blam! That's uh, what it's and looking what, like on the radar. What's the intensity? Category 4. Holy shit. Yeah, uh, 140 mile an hour sustained winds. Uh Whoa. 938 millibars on the pressure reading. What's and, that uh, tidal storm surge looking like? Oh, Over dude, it feet? was the dude, it was the and she's affecting the entire Gulf Coast. All the way down to to like Brownsville and shit. And like we're not we're not going to see anything where I am from this storm, but it's affecting the the coast. Wow. Yeah. This is a big one. It's going to fuck up a lot of shit. I'd imagine there's probably already, well, I mean, shit, Unidozer <clears throat> earlier was saying he was having trouble with his signal because of the storm. Huh. Wow. Helene makes landfall in the Florida Big Bend. That's right. So, let me see here. Storm surge inundation. All right. Yeah, I was seeing footage earlier of, uh, I think it was bridges, maybe down around the Keys or somewhere that, like, you couldn't drive over them. There was way too much water coming over the top of the bridge. And there, so, oh, it looks like it's hitting Cedar Key. And Dunellen. Oh, shit, that's where my Aunt Chris is. Prayers for Aunt Christine. They're down there in Dunellen, right by uh, Hernando and Citrus Springs. It looks like they'll be all right, though. That's um, right where they're at. Um, and it looks like the, yeah, Cedar Keys. Um, this path is pretty much following the uh, Florida Canal. Oh, yeah? You ever heard of that? No. What is that? Oh, well, 
they decided that it would be cheaper for the oil industry if we could build a canal straight across Florida. That way, they, you wouldn't have to go all the way around the Florida Keys. You could just cut in at Jacksonville, boop, pop out right by, uh, just straight into the Gulf, north of Tampa. Hmm. And so, they started digging that canal. Uh, but then, like, people got mad because this was in the 70s. I think it was um, LBJ was building that canal. But anyways, the... Um, I mean, it sounds like... The Canal project. was very abruptly just brought to a screeching halt. And it's just kind of been in limbo ever since. And so now you've got like, well, they built the lock and dam on the Gulf side, and you can use that one and go up the canal that from that end um, up towards Citrus Springs, where it just didn't, where it just dead ends. I mean, well. Hmm. The grading for the whole canal bed is still all the way connected through, but it was never flooded because they never finished the other two locks and dams that were in the middle to go over the summit. Um, but then coming from the other end, the St. John's River coming up from Jacksonville, Duval County, Florida, they put in like three or four locks and dams there too. Um, all right, I guess I'm going to have to call it Get Back Harder. So. Let's see here. Oh, there was last time about that. It, it was the, it was like a Panama Canal for, for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> and this uh, hurricane. What's well, the name? Florida Canal. It's pretty much. You wouldn't want to name it the Panama Canal of Florida. Florida. That'd be dumb. Canal. The Florida Barge Canal. That's what it's called. Huh. Florida Barge Canal. Land. Uh, yeah, the Oklawaha Ak River. Florida's Forgotten River. Um, the Cross Florida Barge Canal. Florida's Boondoggle. Well, all right, let me pull this up. I mean, it's a good idea. I don't know why they wouldn't have finished it. That just I know, really right? Dumb. But, but then again, it is, you know, government project. So they do shit like this all the time. Uh, let's just dump, a, you know, $500 million into this project we never intend to finish. Nobody will mind six months from now. I can't believe that they managed to stop it, but they did. Mm -hmm. So let's pull this up here. Screen share. Give you some audio visual to go along with this story here from the Yona. Blam! Florida's boondoggle. I'm Craig Patrick, joining you from the famous Oklahoma River. <laughs> For the next half hour, I would like to take you all along one of the most beautiful rivers in the world. But we can't. It's very devastating to realize what was there and what was lost. This is the story of one of Florida's greatest natural treasures crushed and mangled. It looked like a war scene. That's the closest analogy I can come up with. It looked like it had been bombed. By the failures and follies of the Cross Florida Canal. It's a waste of money. We're throwing money in, into a rat hole and it created a long-running controversy that's coming to a head. So the Rodman Dam is 55 years old, and it is uh, a 50-year-old shelf life. And so any day now, something is going to happen. And it all starts some 90 years ago with an ill-conceived plan that became Florida's boondoggle. Well, our government made a big mistake that burned taxpayers and damaged our environment over and over again. They tried to build a canal through the middle of Florida and repeatedly failed. 
and the damage they left behind touched off a dispute that we're still dealing with today. Yeah, I, I just have to interrupt here. All right. They didn't fail to build the Barge Canal. They were stopped with legal fucking injunction. Had they not been stopped in the court, the canal would have been completed and there would be all types of fucking shipping traffic using it all the time. So why did they stop it? That's the question. They stopped it because it was destroying the world famous Oklawaha River. It's so famous, no one's ever even fucking heard of it. Right. Because it's just a bunch of fucking swamp full of alligators. I'm sorry. It's an amazing biodiversity gem jewel in Florida. I mean, it sounds like a swamp with, with gators. Yeah. Right, we got oh, my God. You, you dug a channel special. through the middle of the swamp. Deep enough for boats to use it. Jesus now. Christ, the entire state of Louisiana is a swamp with gators. This is not unique. Anyway. I still cannot believe the way they just terminated that project. And they were so close to being done. How much had they spent up to that point? In today's money, untold billions of dollars. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. We're talking about multiple locks and dams, grading by the Army Corps of Engineers, over the, plus all the, really the most expensive part of the project was all of the channel dredging. That's where you get the big bucks. You know, bringing in those fucking dredging machines, which then, you know, make the channel deeper so that you can have bigger vessels with deeper draft. Anyway. Yeah, so you can make even more money. But not not this project, no. We're we're gonna get like almost almost finished and then we're just gonna quit. You see, it was going to be a great shortcut for the Intracoastal Waterway, which is basically a canal, navigation channel, collection of different canals um, that runs from Brownsville, Port of Brownsville, Texas, mm-hmm. all the way up to um, Kennebunkport, Maine, basically Augusta, Maine, the Intracoastal Waterway. And it's got a couple of major canals, like there's the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal that cuts across so that shipping traffic can come down and then cut across from Atlantic City and there's a can- there's a canal there that cuts off through that cuts right through the middle of the uh, mono nipple hanging from New Jersey and then goes up <coughs> the mouth of Delaware Bay and then cuts across to the Del uh to the Chesapeake Bay, cutting across Delaware there. And then there's uh, the canal that cuts from, goes up the Elizabeth River right there between uh, Norfolk and Suffolk. Yeah. And then it runs over through the Dismal, the Dismal Swamp, and and that canal popped Which out really is dismal the, if, for folks who've never is. seen it. It's not it really much is. to look at. Uh, but then that thing pops out into uh, uh, the Alligator River estuary right there, which is bordered by like Kitty Hawk and the Outer Banks and stuff. Yeah, I, I should have known better to put it on public TV and they start talking, telling history. Hmm. But it's not the real history. It's twisted and deformed. Well, let's see what else. We As usual. Oh, there's some cool graphics. Let's hmm. see what we got here. Wait. To try to cut a major shipping canal through Florida as part of FDR's New Deal. Through a well-conceived and actively directed plan of action. 
plan was to make a shortcut for large ships in the Gulf so they wouldn't have to curve around Florida to reach the Atlantic. The idea had been floated around for hundreds of years. An engineer said it would take a lot of work and did not make economic sense to do. But during the Great Depression, Roosevelt keyed into the part about it requiring a lot of work. Hundreds of thousands given new employment. While he launched successful civil works projects across the nation. And so I see we're at 11.54, so I guess I'm going to have to cut to the chase here. So um, hmm. if you're wondering what killed the project, why did they stop? Well, unlike uh, the Suez Canal, you know, the Suez Canal does not have any locks or dams. This, the entire channel of the Suez Canal is at sea level. They just completely dug out the sand all the way down to sea level. And so that makes it neat. Because yeah. they can literally just pass from the Mediterranean to the Red Sea and they don't ever have to lock the ships up or down or anything. Right. Pretty cool. Um, the Panama Canal, on the other hand, does have locks and dams to get over the summit, the Continental Divide. Uh, and that's the whole problem you have with most canals. Whenever the canal summits a climb, it's going to need a feeder lake at the top elevation pool. Otherwise, that makes sense. every time you lock a boat out of that upper pool, you're, You're just going to keep water. losing water until yeah. you can't run boats over the top of the right. island. So you need a feeder lake. Well, the plan was, once they put in those last two dams, that would also then dam up the headwaters of the world-famous, you've never heard of, Ocklawaha River, which is a tributary to the St. John's River, which empties into the Atlantic at the port of Jacksonville, Florida, the main port of supply for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands because of the Jones Act. Um, and if you're not familiar with the Jones Act, that means you have to have a U.S. chartered vessel with a U.S. crew to transport goods from U.S. mainland to U.S. territories. Is that the John Paul Jones Act? Um, that's the Suck These Nuts Jones Act. Yeah. And that's why Puerto Rico gets fucked every time. Double fucked. They get hit with a hurricane, and then they can't hardly get any help because the U.S. will not let any other ships deliver anything to Puerto Rico. No, that's, that's what you get Jacksonville. for uh, rebuking Led Zeppelin. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, good news, Yona, is we were able to get through the entire broadcast. Uh, with oh, are we here? Yeah. Well, we got less than two minutes left. I gotta say, the last oh, we week, got about two minutes left, I guess. The last week for me just absolutely flew by. Working did, myself to death. And then these last two hours just went by in like the blink of an eye. Um, but uh, it's just amazing to me. I, I mean, when I look around, what what I enjoy the most out of every day is the solidarity that I feel with all the other pissant peasants out there driving to whatever, doing whatever with fucking duct tape and cardboard and trash bags or Walmart sacks, you know, over the mm -hmm. holes in the windows and only one headlight working, padiddle. And, you know, just everywhere I see, like, regular Americans or what do you call them, the white people, just barely hanging on, barely surviving. Yeah, and uh, the last thing I've been saving for the last minute here McDonald's makes their own brand of Crocs Crocs 
Mick Crocs. Mick Crocs. You're shitting me. There are Mick Crocs. Um, well, I seen a guy, a white guy, wearing Mick Crocs, and he had an Amazon fanny pack. Because apparently those are coming back. At which point I thought, you know what? It's it's you know down with the honky. It, it's no wonder why there's so. So much we're, so we're there. going straight idiocracy. That's where we're yeah. heading. Okay, all right. At least we know. It, it's no wonder why there's such anti-white discrimination now. It's the McCrocks. It is. I I'm I not honestly. I think it's the stupidity. But what do I know? That too. Yeah. Well, you'd have to be stupid to wear McCrocks. But that's just me. Yeah. Say I'm not a fan of McDonald's. Not a fan of McDonald's. Why would you let a clown make your food? That's not funny. And it's not food, and it's not fast, and it's not cheap either. But please keep ordering, because I, I, I deliver a lot of McDonald's. To the fanciest homes. Mm. That's why I know um, we're about to win, Drizzle. <laughs> you say I know so. what they eat. And it's garbage. Anyways, where's the dolly getting the guy? The <coughs> Blessings to everyone. Just talk safety. Take care of yourself. Be careful. Right. And don't forget to join us tomorrow night. Steve Woo-hoo! from AM Wake Up is going to be hanging out on the broadcast. You don't want to miss that, ladies and gentlemen. You're released into the world. I don't know uh, where you're going to go, but. You got to find somewhere. See you tomorrow night.